Okay, we're rolling. Thank you, Michael. My, Michael McNamara is the director of Past Assault and a great movie, man. It's about time somebody did a movie about my favorite additive and what we used to use for uh, currency back in the day. Worth your weight in salt. That goes way back to, I don't know, what, 6,000 years ago? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's always been important. It's uh, uh, never been unimportant. It is, as you said, this is really our most uh, valuable uh, uh, food additive. Um, you couldn't run a professional kitchen without it. Um, yeah. But um, in the last 50 years or so, there's been an ongoing battle against it. And uh, um, it's certainly something I've always been curious about. Um, because it's, it's, you know, it's pretty much my, you know, my, my favorite food additive. Um, so, um, yeah, we wanted to know about uh, just how much um, how much we've been right about salt, how much we've uh, maybe uh, been wrong about it. Okay, we're just dropping you a little bit there, uh, Michael. So uh, maybe we could get just get you to um, maybe give us a brief history of what you've done, who you are, and then we'll get into the new movie and when we can when and where we can see it. So okay. Yeah, uh, well, um, uh, my name is Michael McNamara. Um, uh, I'm uh, the uh, co-president of Markham Street Films, which is um, a company that was started by myself and my wife, Judy Holm, in the year 2000, I guess. Um, we started it out of our house, and uh, we've done, I don't know, uh, Dozens and dozens of, uh, of, of documentaries, uh, some feature films. Uh, the films have mostly been about pop culture, but we've done a number of science films over the past few years, mostly about human health. Um, we did a film called uh, uh, Not Just for Kids, Adult ADHD. Um, another one was about the cholesterol question. We were looking at uh, uh, the new and emerging science around uh, cholesterol and heart disease. Uh, there's another one called Lights Out, which was about uh, uh, the effects of light at night on uh, human health. And, um, and more recently, we did uh, Catwalk, which is a film about uh, cat shows. It's basically like best in show, but with cats, and it's real. <laughs> and, uh, 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 and, and that was done for the CBC. And, and uh, so we, um, and we've done feature, feature films, uh, genre films. Recently, we did a film called uh, Level 16, which is a sort of a feminist horror thriller. Um, it was directed by Anishka Esther Hazy, and uh, so I'm an exec producer on that. Uh, my wife, Judy, uh, was the main producer on it. Um, so yeah, we're keeping busy. And um, you know, we're always interested in stories about, um, about things that people think they know a lot about. And then we like to look at ways to kind of turn that common wisdom on its head, try and find a new way of looking at it, a new perspective. And um, salt is one of those things that's pretty common. Uh, and uh, it's um, probably our oldest food additive. It's the one thing that was probably, uh, it will certainly been a very important um, food preservative for, for, for centuries now. Um, and as you mentioned, it's uh, very much a, uh, it's, it was valuable and hard to come by at one point, and uh, so it was basically used as currency. Apparently, the word salary comes from uh, and salad. I was surprised to find that out today. Yeah, salad and salary, both the uh, roots of salt. Hmm. I see a couple of things on your resume here. Yeah, um, you know, when you think about. No, I just see a couple uh, impressive resume and quite a lot of work you've done here. Uh, a couple that I ring true uh, sound interesting to me, anyway. Yeah. Is you just touched on ADHD, not just for kids. That sounds interesting. And Radio Revolution, the rise and fall of the Big Eight. Uh, is there any place that we can catch this stuff after it's not on TV anymore or after its premiere? Well, yeah, Radio Revolution uh, was one of the first films the uh, company made, and uh, it's uh, av currently available on uh, um, on DVD, <laughs> and uh, okay. uh, you can find it in a couple of shops in Toronto, uh, uh, and one in Windsor, which is where we you know made the film because it's about the radio station in Windsor, 
uh, and it's also available on our on our website. Um, it was one of those things that because it was you know we had um, there was 24 pop songs in it, including John, Guess Who, Alice Cooper, all these uh, artists that were very big on, the, on that particular radio station. Um, and so clearing the rights was was important, and uh, and we haven't really gotten around to re-clearing those rights because of okay. 24 pop songs. In it. <laughs> but uh, the, the DVD is still available, and you can get it online. Uh, and uh, one of these days, we'll figure out a way to. to because I think a lot of people who are interested in broadcasting um, in rock and roll culture and history. Um, so it's interesting, and the ADHD, um, not just so for kids, obviously. Yeah, we, we, I've, I've, been lucky enough, yeah. so I've, I've been lucky enough to be able to do sort of films about things that interested me. Interest me. I had a friend uh, who, um, you know, who was pushing 60 and announced to me that he had just uh, uh, been uh, uh, just been diagnosed with ADHD, and that was completely shocked. I thought, wait, that's not just for kids. And he said, well, adults, you know, some adults have it all their lives and don't even know about it. So mm -hmm. it was a pretty... Um, um, so, you know, again, that was kind of one of those stories we thought, okay, we're, we're going to take something that everybody thinks they know about and, um, and, and surprise the heck out of them. Uh, uh, great. And the, the salt story was one of those things where we just thought, you know, we, we all, um, we use it in the kitchen. We, we certainly have it in our favorite snack foods. We about it in there's you know, particularly in things that we didn't know there was a lot of it in, like bread, for instance. Uh, I didn't know this yeah. was it. There's quite a bit of salt in bread, and it's mostly because it's used uh, to add texture to the bread. To uh, it, it, it affects the crumb uh, structure, and uh, and it wouldn't turn brown if you didn't have. I, I knew I didn't know. Wow. Uh, so it's very important, but it does have a higher amount of salt than you would, you would never think. Um, and then the question for the film was: Is that a bad thing? Yeah, I did a salt experiment at one time. It was called the salt water diet, and you just shot a, 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 I don't know, it was a teaspoon of salt in warm water and drank it in the morning, and then all day you practiced uh, drinking half your body weight in uh, ounces of water, I think it was, and I swear it cured my allergies. And it was strange because when you're on the diet, if you had alcohol, you had to replace it with four times the water. So as a result, I just didn't drink. I didn't have the time because I was drinking water so much I couldn't fit more in. So I just gave up beer for a while. And strangely, when I went back, when I had a couple beers here or there, uh, the next day I had an allergy fit. And I know it wasn't the beer I'm allergic to because I'm not allergic to beer, but I have environmentals and I was just a mess the next day. And then I stayed with uh, you know, over hydrating for a long time and then my environmentals just kind of disappeared. I don't get allergies anymore. I'm not sure it was that, or I just grew out of them at the same time. It was a coincidence. But I constantly, mm. I, I can't remember the last time I'm a big fan of salt. I mean, we need salt, mm. and I think I'm one of the few people out there that's got a, a, a positive opinion of salt. And I know, I mean, there's so many false narratives out there, and I appreciate this movie so much because I'm a fan of salt. It tastes great. It makes my tongue excited for food it doesn't matter what it is and uh and you can't live without it so i, I was pleased that, and by the way you got a great pr department thank you to her for getting me on the show and when, when i'm watching it I've, I, i'm all I, it's it's not it wasn't new information for me so much but i think a lot of people will be surprised by how much salt we actually need and a friend of mine quoted uh, that was in your movie, you know, the, the Boston Marathon runner, was it, that uh, collapsed and died from no. lack of salt, too much water? Yeah, well, I think the thing is, uh, and this is something I really don't know too much about, I mean, you think about your body and your health, but uh, there's always something you don't learn. And uh, the salt is a black for light, and we've all heard that term when you talk about uh, Gatorade and things like that. And what it is, is salt, um, when it mixes with a... Um, it's, Electrolytes, when they mix with fluid, um, they re release an electric charge. And uh, so what happens is when you consume salt, this, this electric charge is basically released throughout the whole body, and uh, it searches around in the body looking for places that need power. And that includes the brain, it includes uh, nerve function, muscle function, uh, just about everything that uh, that needs, needs energy gets it from the salt. Uh, and so... Uh, 
a marathon runner, or, or an athlete uh, who is losing a lot of both salt and, and water when they when they exercise or run, um, they uh, if they just replenish with water and don't replenish with salt, they'll get a salt deficit, and and that power is no longer available to the body, and the body collapses and it just shuts down. Um, and um, if you really push it, you could you could die. It's called hyper hypernatremia. Um, now, I mean that's that's a um, that's the kind of the far end of the spectrum, um, and it's true that uh, we found this when we were making the film is that uh, the big issue for the World Health Organization, the Canadian Heart Association, the American Heart Association has been that salt is associated with high blood pressure. And the thing is, um, it's true, but it's only true, and we know this, it's only true for one in four people. The other 75% uh, of the population could eat all the salt they want, and, well, not all the salt they want, because you know, again, it's all moderation, but um, it, they, they can eat all the salt they want without any, any uh, um, uh, bad effects. So, um, when you think about that, you got to think about uh, what is it we lose when we, when we, I mean, it's one to say, okay, you know, um, tobacco, you know, there's, there's, there's no daily requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, uh, uh, and so it's, it's, uh, there's no argument that, uh, that it's important to cut that out of your, out of your intake. Um, the same for chocolate. Um, there's, <laughs> There's a number of, uh, of habits that we have. But salt isn't a habit; it's a necessity. We 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 evolved from sea-dwelling creatures, and we now carry around that um, in sea internally uh, because we need it, and uh, and we are constantly replenishing that. We replenish the fluids in our body, and we replenish the salt because we wind up you know uh, peeing it out every day. Um, but the way all of this works. Um, has been a, a sort of ongoing uh, debate and really great minds, and this is the other thing that attracted us to this story, is that really great minds can't agree on just how salt behaves in the body, how important it is, and what the right amount is. And it turns out that, you know, you can have, not only can um, you can go too low, certainly you can go too high, but um, there is a sweet spot, and it's measurably higher than what um, most of the health organizations have been telling us. Now, again, we're not, you know, we're not doctors, and we're not. We shouldn't be. Uh, nobody should take this as a as a as a, as a golden rule. Uh, everybody needs to kind of um, kind of monitor their own intake and their own health. But um, and you alluded to this, you know, um, uh, a healthy diet, uh, an enjoyable, pleasant meal, is kind of a, I don't know. A, a, is one of the joys of being human, you know, being able to kind of, you know, prepare food that not that looks good, tastes great, you can enjoy it with your friends, and it kind of sucks all the joy out of life if you have to like uh, remove something as important and as elemental as, as salt from your from your table. Um, so when we were making the film, um, I, we're looking for ways to, to tell a story about what goes on inside of the body, and it's always a difficult thing to do. Um, so the film opens actually at the Stratford Chef School, which is in Stratford, Ontario, and uh, it, they have a two-year program where they train um, internationally uh, recognize, recognized uh, uh, chefs. And so these are it's a, it's a really great school, great uh, great graduates, and a number of the graduates have gone on to uh, to kitchens around the world, um, and so. They, they do, it's kind of like a barber trap at college, I suppose, or a dental college where they, <laughs> they try stuff out on, on the public. They do a five, uh, five nights a week, they do a, a dinner that's open to the public. Um, and uh, it's like a four course meal, they have wine pairings, and it's every, every night is a different menu. Uh, it's a different cuisine and different uh, head chef. And um, it's beautifully prepared food. And so we thought this might be a great opportunity to see salt goes into the preparation of a, of a high quality meal. So we measured all the salt at the beginning of the, of the day when we were preparing the, uh, the, the meal to people. 
and then we measure it again at the end of the night to find out just how much went out the door and onto the plates. Um, and um, I think most people won't be surprised that it's probably a little bit more than they would do in their own kitchen um, because, you know, um, it was interesting to watch. I mean, there's these chefs with handfuls of salt just tossing them in. So it's, uh, they're, they're, professional chefs use a lot more salt than we probably would at home. Um, but it's a very good reason. You know, there's, for instance, I, you know, um, you don't think about this, but uh, pasta water, when you're making pasta, mm -hmm. um, when you add salt, you increase the boiling temperature of the water. So it's sort of chemical properties, not flavor, but it increases the temperature of, 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 the, of the water. And so it's a higher boiling point. It cooks fast and it comes out al dente. If you don't put salt in, it's going to come out soggy because it's going to cook more slowly and softer and it'll just get mushy. So salt is really important. It's not there for the flavor. It's there for its chemical properties. And I saw this in the kitchen where they were using it to tenderize meat or to, uh, to brine fish. And uh, there's lots of other reasons that you use salt up, above and beyond just, you know, the, the, the nice hit you got of a potato chip. <laughs> I'm glad you said that uh, and talked about taking one of the most important things out. When somebody comes towards the salt shaker and in my presence at a table, I get the knife out to stab them because that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's mine and it shall not leave the front of my plate, not even for a second. So, and a friend of mine was at a girlfriend of mine's house the other day and she had this a uh, half-baked bread that you put in the oven and it rises, it finishes off, and it's really nice and crusty and it's great, warm. And she brought me over some butter and I asked her for some salt. And she said, well, "What's the matter? You don't like? I mean, I put salt on it. I asked. I almost always ask for salt for everything." And she says, "What's the matter? You don't like my my unsalted butter?" I said, "That's that's sacrilegious. There's no it's unsalted. Well, I bake a lot." She says, "I said I don't care. You should never buy unsalted butter. That's one thing." And and the movie was great. It was so cute in the opening segment there. Oh, ever tried green peas without salt? You know. And I think of the things that are an unsalted cracker. Are you kidding me? Unsalted butter? That's that's outrageous. So uh, I, I'm so pleased to see the movie and uh, good on you. I thought it was really entertaining. But did you learn anything in your uh, in making of the movie? Don't pass us on. Don't pass us on. I'm sorry. Would you? Would yeah. I wonder. Did you? How much did you learn? Did you learn anything interesting about uh, salt in the making of the movie? Am I still cutting out? Yeah, well, what did we learn? Um, it's a good question. We, you know, I, 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 this is the thing when I make a, a science film, I'm not a scientist, I'm a, a storyteller and a filmmaker. So, whenever I make a science film, I become an expert for like about a year and a half. Yeah. And then, as soon as I start working on a new one, all the old stuff goes out of my head. I, I completely <laughs> forgot everything I, I knew all about ADHD or cholesterol or all those other things. So, for the moment, I'm a, I'm a salt expert, but, but I won't be. A month from now, so, so. but um, um, I I really never thought about the the notion of salt as as, as both a, a a chemical resource when in the kitchen, but uh, certainly you know it's it's important for all kinds. But it goes into steel making. It goes into it's it's we could we could go into all of this. I mean, our our primary objective was to talk about it in the diet, uh, and there were things I just had never really sort of considered about it before. Um, but it, it's uh, one, one of the interesting things we found out um, was there was a study that was done, and this is, I think, one of the things that triggered us looking at this in the first place. There was a study done um, in Moscow with uh, uh, where they did a simulated flight to Mars, and they had uh, Russian cosmonauts um, basically locked in a, uh, a simulated space for a period of about uh, uh, 13 months. and Doing uh, studies of diet are really difficult because all you can rely on is people's food diaries and the only other. And most scientific studies require isolation. You need to like isolate your subject from the rest of the world and from outside sources. So this was a perfect um, opportunity to uh, to to really look closely at what was going into the body and coming out of the body. And so uh, a team of German scientists came just to do that, to, to 
control all the food and to control the salt. And then they experimented with how much salt they would put into the diet and uh, to see how, how it was processed in the body. And they were shocked at the things that they discovered about salt. For one thing, they found that we store salt. We, we never knew this before. We, you know, we always thought that you know, one of the reasons you need to you know, the, flip, the taste for salt is because you need to constantly be replenishing it because you can't store salt the way you store fat. Well, it turns out you can, but they can't figure out why. It's not, it, it basically is going into other parts of the body that have nothing to do with you know, this electrolyte system I was talking about. They found that it's being stored in the skin. So we, we actually went to, uh, the, the people that ran, ran the study are now uh, uh, doing follow-up studies in Singapore so I got to go to Singapore uh, and, uh, and film uh, research they're doing there. And they have uh, MRIs that they've retuned to look for sodium in the body. And so you, you, you climb in and they, they scan you and uh, they can actually see the salt in, in, in the muscle tissue and in the skin. And um, they found that the older you get, the more you store. And uh, again, they can't quite figure out why. Uh, they suspect it's because, as we know, salt attracts water, uh, and they suspect it's there to hold the water in the body because as the older we get, apparently, uh, the leakier we get in terms of our skin. So this is why we get wrinkles, because the skin can no longer hold on to the moisture. And so they think the salt is there to essentially trap the moisture in the, in the body and, and to keep it from dehydrating. Um, so th that's, that's pretty cool. And the, the thing about salt is that there is no, it's not binary, it's not on or off, it's not uh, yes or no, it's, you know, on one hand, um, it's really our most important uh, um, uh, condiment, on the other hand, it's, it's potentially uh, um, um, harmful for some people, it um, will preserve food. Uh, but we'll also, anybody who's ever been through a Canadian winter knows that uh, it'll destroy your pant cuffs and your, and, and your, and your shoes and your, uh, your boots and your, uh, um, your car. Yeah, <laughs> it'll cause you know, salt and rust and so on. So it can, it can uh, um, degrade and erode and, and cause all kinds of, you know, sort of problems. But at the same time, it's, so it's, it's, very, it's kind of the Jekyll and Hyde of, you know, of, uh, of, our, of our foodstuffs. And, uh, um, and there's, I think this is one of the reasons why it continues to be um, a source of argument for, um, you know, great minds. They don't all think alike when it comes to salt. So um, it's really interesting to kind of like jump feet first into that, uh, into that ongoing debate. Michael McNamara is my guest. He's the director of Pass the Salt. Did you, any industry feedback at all, Michael? I, I've never heard of a salt lobby. Well, in fact, there is. There's a, actually, a guy, if you look online, there's a guy who's uh, uh, who's known as the Salt Guru, and uh, he's a uh, uh, his last name is spelled the same as Satan, S H E I, and and, and uh, uh, he's a he's a guy who's I think he's originally from Canada. He, he's uh, very very much in the kind of the salt lobby. And the thing is, um, and. I have to admit, when we went looking to do this story, we were contacting the uh, you know, manufacturers and people who work in the food industry to, to get access to so we get some interesting visuals and also so we contacted uh, a couple of different salt companies uh, that produce uh, kosher salt and stuff, and it was really difficult to get access. I mean, and in the end, we didn't you know we didn't get as much access as we would like because they're all suspicious and they're all worried that we're going to to slag them. Because the ongoing message has been that salt is to be demonized, and and certainly we went in this trying to find a way to, to understand why that might be, and understand whether or not it's been fairly and justly demonized. And so far, everything we found points to um, uh, it was kind of an easy target. I think um, you know there was a, there there was a lot of I mean, the thing about nutrition uh, is that it's really still a kind of a, we're still beginners when it comes to knowing just how things work. I mean, every couple of years, there's a new one. You know, you need red wine in your diet. It'll you know, clean out your pipes. Oh, no, you don't. You shouldn't be drinking any alcohol. Well, coffee is good for you. Coffee isn't good for you. Uh, high fat, low fat, you know, uh, high carb diet, all those things. Uh, uh, 
So every, you know, every once in a while, one of these things comes up and you got to like, excuse the pun, you got to think about it with, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, and uh, the thing about this particular message is that it's stuck as long as it has. Um, I mean, the thing is they debunked all those other ones I'm talking mm-hmm. about, but the salt one continues to be um, a real bone of contention. And in fact, you mentioned the, at the beginning of uh, somebody saying, have you ever had peas with uh, salt? Uh, there's a, a man named Dr. Clyde Yancey, who's at the Northwestern Hospital in, in, in Chicago. He um, was the head of the American uh, uh, Heart Association, and he wrote an article because he, he went looking for new research to find out um, whether or not there was a benefit to cutting back salt in the diet, especially for people who had already had heart disease. And they couldn't find any evidence. <laughs> None. Um, and so he, he wrote this article saying, we've got to stop telling our patients to, to, to remove salt from their diets because it has on all kinds of unintended consequences. It's, it's not a cheap thing to, to have a, a good, healthy diet that is salt free. For one thing, you pretty much have to cook all your food from scratch because only 10% of the salt that winds up in our diets on average comes from the salt shaker on your table wow. or in your kitchen. The rest of it comes from uh, um, uh, industrial food sources, the, the bread that you buy in, 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 uh, at the bakery. Um, a lot of salt goes into bread now. Um, and again, it's not there just for flavor. It's there because it helps the crust uh, uh, turn brown. It uh, adjusts the, uh, the crumb te- texture. And it, it, it tempers yeast activity. It does all these important things that have nothing to do with the way it tastes. So um, it's a, a, it, there are a lot of unintended consequences to, to removing salt from the diet. And so, that, so it was kind of a shock when uh, Dr. Yancey wrote this, uh, this editorial telling people that until we have better evidence, we need to, to knock it off and be, be careful about the kinds of pronouncements that we make. Uh, um, and that was a shock to, to a lot of the uh, medical community. So certainly we want to talk to him. Um, it's it's a um, it's really interesting when you have and I can't think of anything else that has has been so contentious uh, for as long as it has been uh, than something as simple as well how much how little uh, is there a sweet spot uh, and um, it's a, a it's been an interesting uh, an interesting challenge to tell this story. Yeah, I can imagine. And you mentioned so many things. There's been conspiracies on so many products. The fat intake with animal fats, good for us. We know now, uh, butter even, eat margarine. Eat margarine? Are you kidding? It's like a, a petroleum product for crying out loud. And and salt will give you high blood pressure. Well, is that actually untrue? Are we, you know, and who's going to dial it back? And and who stands to be the beneficiary of, of people getting the message and going, yay, salt. So go, you know, and when I was on my salt water diet, mm-hmm. if I forgot to do a, a shot in the morning, it was just a small shot of salt, of salty water, the idea was just salt your food, heavily salt your food afterwards, which is never a problem. Um, and so many things, I mean, French fries, you, you, you name it, you can't eat an unsalted chip. And uh, it's really amazing to me when you say ten percent comes from the salt shaker. I, wow, that's that blows my mind. And, and I get the yeast temperament. Uh, I, I didn't know about the browning of the bread and, and stuff like that. But that's hey, the crust is the best part. You need a nice crunchy crust, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, you know, so it's, it's it's one of those things that you just really um, you, we we take for granted, and uh, um, it. it at the root of all of this has been this idea that salt has an effect on, on um, your blood pressure. And it's true, um, high amounts of salt, really high amounts of salt can affect your, your blood pressure. Uh, but when it comes to moderate amounts of salt, only one in four people, uh, uh, or one in five, depending on who you talk to, uh, are salt sensitive and will have um, a high blood pressure reaction to sodium intake. The other 75% of us really don't need to worry that, that much as long as we maintain a moderate amount. And that's a, it's kind of like, you know, sort of hitting a fly with a sledgehammer. I mean, you, 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 to, to make pronouncements about something that is just so fundamental to the way we, we live and the way we, we eat and, and uh, uh, our cuisine around the world really relies on, you know, the, the Korean food is just 
really salty. Um, uh, certainly French and Italian cooking, really, you know, they would just look at you. I mean, a bruschetta, you know, you got the tomatoes, you got the olive, you got the mm. olive oil. You gotta have some salt on that, or just, you know, for, for color, for texture, for flavor, it, it just, it just intensifies, you know, and enhances the, and it's true that uh, um, one in four, one in five people will probably have some kind of a, uh, a blood pressure reaction to that, uh, and they can watch themselves, but the, it's very much an individual, it's one of those things, you know, when you're telling these kinds of stories, people say, okay, well, so what's the final word on this, is it good or bad, you know, and, and you know, the, the answer is yes, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good or bad, depending upon how much and who you are and what your ethnicity is too. There, there may be uh, uh, some, there, there may be some, some populations may be more uh, uh, salt sensitive than others, um, and they're still kind of figuring that out. Um, so it's important not to, you know, to, to, to um, really look at the way it affects you personally and uh, only, only, because I'm not a doctor. I just play one on television. So. Yeah, I found it interesting the guys out in BC that were actually, well, they say they weren't making salt because salt's been here long before humans were here, but they were taking the salt out of the, uh, uh, the fresh sourced salt water sea in BC. And uh, uh, what's your reaction been? Did, you know, do people just throw up their hands and go, okay, I'm okay, I'm back on salt, or do they resist and, and dig in and say, well, you might think it's okay, but. but. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, you know, I, um, well, we, the film hasn't uh, premiered in, as of, at the moment anyway. It's, uh, we, we get together, we have reaction from the public, we haven't been showing it to friends and so on. And, you know, you know, let's face it. Most of us, you know, as as Canadians, we, you know, we have uh, uh, the average Canadian salt intake is somewhere between three point five grams and five grams. Uh, and so, what would that be in a tablespoon? And, uh, that that is basically about a tablespoon and a half, or a teaspoon and a half of salt, give or take. Okay. And um, the American Heart Association, the Canadian Heart Association, they want us to go down to less than a half a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot, uh, and it doesn't go very far. Um, and so um, there has been, and this is the other reason why there's been this kind of contention about it, which is that like, that low, um, not only are you affecting, uh, you know, the, uh, the pleasures of, uh, of, of, of good, healthy eating, that's another thing. Um, you, you mentioned peas. Uh, there are some cruciferous vegetables like uh, broccoli, for instance, and Brussels sprouts that are not all that tasty until you sprinkle a little bit of salt on them. Um, completely transforms the way, you know, it, it, it tempers the bitterness. Um, eggplant, it's another, uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it completely transforms the dish and makes it. So these are all healthy foods uh, that you would probably be eating more of. If you put a little salt, a pinch of salt on it. Uh, so this kind of fear of salt is really uh, um, unfounded. So. Now, David Suzuki narrated the film. I hope I'm not giving too much away, uh, and I'd like you to give us some information as far as where we can see it. But he said a pinch of salt, and I just brought my trusty salt shaker out here because I have one in my desk. I eat at my office desk so often that I have a salt <laughs> shaker. Wow. And I'm just looking. He yeah, said a really? pinch of salt can contain a thousand granulars or grains of salt. I don't, like, I don't even was even thinking in my mind. I mean, that sounds like a lot. And I'm just looking here. I just put yeah. 20 or 40 on my desk here. And man, it doesn't right. seem like a thousand grains would fit in a pinch. That it must be a big pinch. But. Well, yeah, yeah. And it depends on what kind of salt it is, too, because uh, um, table salt uh, compared to uh, kosher salt, for instance. And the, the volume is very different. Um, right. You know, you could take a, 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 an ounce of one and an ounce of the other, and they'll be very different in terms of the density. Oh, yeah. uh, and so this has become a kind of a problem with uh, as it, this wider uh, kosher salt has become kind of the the standard for kitchens and for chefs and for for recipes. A lot of people will use a recipe use a recipe and 
use table salt and they'll find that you know the, 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 the dish is completely over salted. That's the other interesting thing about salt is you know one little pinch can can transform and make it you know enhance the flavors of the dish one pinch too many can render it you know you know and it's a kind of a there's, there's, I can't think of anything else that's like that you know I mean there's there's uh, there's there's sweet and there's sweeter um, but there's salt and there's too salty you know so it's a it's a very interesting uh, um, very complicated complex but simple uh, on the surface, uh, a substance. And, um, it's been really an interesting uh, um, challenge to tell the story. But it's yeah. fun. Yeah, that's an interesting point you brought up there. Um, it, it, your unsalted dish goes from, hmm, something's just a little missing here. Maybe salt will take care of it. And salt almost always does. And then to the point where if you oversalt it, it's ruined. You, you don't even want to go near it. You would eat an un, you know, a, a, an undersalted dish with no trouble. You know, it's just kind of, eh, mm -hmm. eh, you're hoping for a little, a little, uh, a little spice there. But uh, then if you, if you get too much, I wonder, did you did you come across when we're talking about different salts um, in the film? They talked about some salt being fluffy, and uh, I wonder if you if you you saw a distinction between iodized salt, which everyone seems to think is evil, to the gray salt that I use in the kitchen. I actually roll it out with a with a rolling pin on, on a wooden board to get it to come down. And that's the gray salt is loaded in nutrients apparently and very, very good for you. Yeah, I mean the thing is, you know, uh, at its very root, salt is salt. So it's all about the sodium uh, and the, that gives the flavor and also may be causing the, uh, the health issues. Uh, and different salts, you're right, will come with different, I mean, you know, there's really no difference between sea salt, for instance, and salt that comes from a mine. They all basically- Come know, from the sea. Mine salt, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I mean, there's no, no difference in terms of the health uh, aspects, uh, uh, but but you're right. Uh, the, the way it's been processed, the way, uh, you know, whether things have been added to it or not, um, there's, some, there's smoked salts, there's, uh, um, there's sea salt that's been naturally uh, 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 dehydrated uh, using the sun as opposed to uh, this fleur de sel that you get in France and so on. And then there's uh, um, a lot of the sea salt that's produced in, in climates like Canada's are done um, using, uh, using uh, big vats that boil down and, and, and reduce and, and, and dissolve the water and then create these beautiful crystalline. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned the, you know, the one in BC, it's beautiful salt, it's really, really lovely, uh, highly prized. Um, we filmed in, in, when we were in Singapore, we filmed at a, um, a soy sauce factory, uh, mm. not really a factory, so it was a, as a, a, it was a boutique uh, operation, a family operation that's been using traditional methods for making soy sauce, um, and they, that was from, soy sauce was invented to kind of stretch salt back in the days when salt was very expensive okay. and, and, and hard to find. And um, what they uh, what they found though is uh, they do it in these big casks out of the sun, and then over a period of years, what happens is uh, uh, salt crust builds up inside the, the vats, and so they and every few years or so they, they harvest that and produce this amazing brown, rich flavored, uh, uh, textured uh, soy salt. And uh, you love this stuff. It's so excited! Really so excited! Uh, yeah, and, and you know, adds an amazing flavor. I mean. You can put it on, on ice cream, it's pretty amazing. Ice cream? So, uh, Wouldn't it melt at all? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you eat it too fast. Yeah. <laughs> you, you would melt it. It's, uh, um, and that's, the, you know, that's the other surprising thing. And things like uh, salted caramel, for instance, which has become yeah. very popular in the last few years. And, and, you know, this, this mixture of sweet and savory and salty um, <laughs> is, is a really an attractive thing. I, I'm actually, I have another thing lined up in a couple of minutes. So oh, I'm great. Gonna, okay, well, great. Michael, thank you so much for your time. It's funny, just on the way out, when you say salty, sweet, salty, sweet, that's what my brother, when we binge snack, it's salty, sweet, salty, go from one to another. Tell us where we can find the film. <laughs> what, what, where, where and when can we see it, Michael? Well, the film uh, premieres uh, uh, on the uh, 17th on CBC 
uh, 9 p.m. Uh, the the uh, Nature Things with David Suzuki, and um, then, then it'll be available on Gen, uh, and uh, I think also on the uh, the CBC website uh, in, in online. So it's pretty much as soon as it goes to air, you'll be able to find it in other places like Gen, and uh, and if you the Gen is I think it's downloadable app, and you can also just you know, watch it on your computer. Yeah, um, great. But um, if you want, if you want to like you know watch it on uh, on your good old fashioned television, you can do that too. So uh, on Friday night. Awesome, Michael McNamara was my guest. He is the director of Paths Assault C on CBC January nineteenth. That's it's Friday. So what is that the seventeenth? Seventeenth nine. Thirty. I'll get the details to you. Anyways, Michael, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Good luck with the film, and I hope you get a good reaction out of it. All right, sir. Have a good day. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. Take care. Cheers. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. You're welcome. I don't know how to stop that thing now. <laughs> stop video. That'll do it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Michael McNamara, if you need him. <clears throat> I forgot to ask where he was. Where? Oh, he's in uh, Stratford. Uh, Ontario. So, uh, yeah, came in today just to talk about his film. Uh, January 17th, 9.30 on CBC. Uh, check it out. Pass the Salt is the film. And uh, stop demonizing salt, man. Salt's good for you. It's great for you. Eat it every day. And, okay, so I, I'm still... Oh, I'm still rolling. Can I just go back to the video? <laughs> Okay, so maybe I was recording or something. I don't know. Okay, we're going to save this. We'll upload it later. Thank you for the people that tuned in on you boobs. Uh, and we'll upload this copy, uh, another copy later that's got the microphones and a little bit better audio. So we didn't have a great Wi-Fi signal on Michael's end. Uh, I think it was his end. He was cutting out just a little bit there, and I seem to be pretty clear. So uh, thank you to Michael McNamara. He is the director of Pass the Salt. Check it on CBC 9.30 Friday, January 17th on The Nature of Things. Uh, um, narrated by the one and only David Suzuki. Um, that's it for now. So we're going to check out of here and say bye bye Tom, do your stuff. Hit record. End meeting. There we go. Click. End meeting for all. Thank you. Peace. Bye, YouTube. Bye-bye.